that's chapter one, really. There's rules about logarithms, rules about exponents. These are all very worthwhile things that we need to study and need to know. But in large part, everything that we do in chapter one just sets us up for the real meat that we want to get into, the real topic that we're here to learn, which is calculus. So please do spend time working through those problems and I've assigned homework problem, homework set. Not only for some little extra, little extra credit on that test, but also for practice using these rules. For practice using the definitions. But the main things that we talked about were from chapter 2, and they dealt with limits. So first we're going to do limits from graphs. You can talk about left and right. as well as just limits. The next thing we're going to talk about after that is we're going to talk about infinite limits and limits with functions. After that, we're going to talk about continuity. After that, we're going to talk about the derivative. And that's it. So we'll get through these two things. I'll stop the video. We'll go on to the next topic. Start a new one. Okay. Just making sure. Yes, we're good. So first, limits from graphs. So I introduced this limit notation, and in words it basically tries to communicate the value of f of x, uh, the value that f of x gets close to. value x gets as I'm putting it in the order of x gets closer to a. Okay, we introduced left hand limits. superscripted. It means the same thing. The value that f of x gets close to as x gets close to a from just below a. So like in parentheses, from just below a. So if a was 0, for example, and you saw a negative here, x was getting closer to that, you'd be picking numbers that get closer to zero, but from the negative side. So like, for example, negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001, etc. They're getting closer to zero, but they're also smaller than zero. And if I made this a plus sign instead, so I'll write it there on right in the same place, it would go here instead of the negative. I, it would be the value that f of x gets close to as x gets closer to a from just above a. So for example, point 
0 0.01, 0 0.001. Here, these are all numbers bigger than 0, and they're getting closer to 0. So just as a general review of what a limit is, there. So what does that look like on a graph? On a graph, what we're doing is we're tracing the height of a function, and we're looking at the graph, uh, kind of, you know, x getting closer to a, we're kind of tracing um, the height of the graph with the inputs in consideration. So, put the inputs in mind. That's what this means. So, when we fix some a, so let's say negative 5, that would be our first limit we consider. The limit as this function, of this function, as x goes to a, maybe from the left first, well, then what we're saying is, hey, we're going to plug in numbers which are just less than negative 5, and we're going to make those numbers get closer and closer and closer and closer to negative 5. What happens to the height of this function as we do that? Well, we sort of play this game where we get closer and closer, right? And the height of this function gets closer and closer to nothing. It's on the x-axis there. If we play the same game but from the right, we pick numbers that are here, a little bit over, negative 5, a little bit over, and we just keep getting closer and closer and closer, and you can see that the heights of the function get closer and closer and closer to zero as well. So this is also zero. And because they agree, we can say that is true. The limit is zero there. So we'll just list out a few limits here. x goes to negative 1. Careful. Hmm? Doesn't exist. It looks like it's going to negative 1 from the left. Or sorry, to 2 from the left. It looks like it's approaching 4 from the right. You can't have a function which is two values at the same thing, right? Okay, so this does not exist. Because it looks like it's taking two separate values that are different. How about at 5? This is one of those stranger ones that, like, maybe we can say this exists if we define it in a specific way. And we did that. So we talked about what happens when a limit is infinite, right? It's not some finite number, but infinite. And that just means that. If we get closer to this number, we can make this get bigger. So if I pick some input close to 5 and I get some output, then I can pick another number closer to 5 and make this even bigger. And that's what this idea of infinity is. We can make something as large as we want. Here from the left it goes to positive infinity, here from the right it goes to positive infinity, so we say the limit exists and is infinite. That's sort of a definition thing, right? Okay, how about at 1? Does not exist again. Looks like it's coming to a value of, I don't know, one and a half from the left and from the right, it's going down to negative infinity. Okay, 
when we have an infinite limit at some finite value of x, we call this a vertical asymptote. And we say that the graph or function has an infinite discontinuity, something that we talked about. You've already seen another kind today, the um, jump discontinuity right here. And what do we call this kind of discontinuity here, where it's just a hole in the graph? Say it again, Derrickson. Uh, removable is perfect. Removable. Yep. Very good. Okay. Um, I'm running out of time too many examples and stuff to go to. So I'm going to skip ahead to the harder stuff. The next thing that I was going to talk about was limits at infinity. So what happens when you have x going to infinity. But I want to go to derivatives next, because that's more difficult stuff. Is that OK? Mm -hmm.